Hello, good afternoon. My name is Luciana and I'm here to present to you the lab session that is part of the input, output and middleware session. And we also have another lab session that will be delivered by CD uh, after my, my session. So this session is mainly about uh, NetCDF files and C language and also a little bit about the utilities that we can use in command line with uh, NetCDF files. And after the session, uh, I have some practicing uh, examples for you to play with uh, the C code and the utilities that I will introduce to you. So uh, the learning objectives, as was stated in the web page, is for this specific part of the lab is to execute programs in C that read and write NetCDF files in a metadata aware manner. We will see exactly what is that. And then analyze, manipulate, and visualize NetCDF data. Uh, so remember, this part is in C, and then we have, say, this part in Python. So my part, the examples that I, I am using, they are mainly for the Unidata website. So you can go to the website and collect the, the examples, and then I will put some links here for you. Uh, those files, they are also available in the Git repository that it's cloned inside the VM. But if you uh, couldn't make the VM work, we can just clone the repository uh, directly. And these files, the majority of them, they're also available when you have the main installation of NetCDF in your computer. So there is a directory called examples, and then you have um, most of those files that I will present here. So if you are interested in have your own installation in your personal machine of NetCDF, that is the session here, section four. It's an appendix for this presentation. So after the, the end of the presentation, we have a, a hidden session. That is a session uh, about how to install NetCDF in a common laptop, I would say, not a server, not, not it's just your personal computer. So uh, the file that I will present here in detail for you, it's called simple XYWR. So this file is a C file, the WR is for write. So the idea is that we will write a simple XY file in NetCDF. So we have more information about this file in those links that are here. And this file as a C file, it depends on two, the main standard libraries uh, in C, and then the NetCDF library. And net, the NetCDF library, by itself depends on the standard uh, definitions, uh, definition library for NetDF and then a library for uh, error manager. So this file, if I uh, slides, I put everything about step-by-step uh, -step of the C file and then some uh, comments about it. But here, because we are in a lab, I would just open the file and then I will explain to you step by step. And then if you want to read what I'm saying now, we can just go back to the presentation. So this is the, uh, the, the repository that I mentioned to you. So IO training, inside IO training, you have lab files. And inside lab files, you have a folder for C files. So in this folder here, you can see that you have different files. So most of those files will be for you to practice after the, the end of the session. And then we have here the file that we are looking for, the simple XY uh, WR file. So we will open this file. I will use gedit to open this file because it's uh, an editor that I know that it's available in the virtual machine. So this editor, to make it a little bit easier to see, you can put line numbers to have an idea about the size of the program. So this is the program that I split in the slides and uh, commented uh, part by part. So here, because we have this interactive uh, session, I can just use uh, the code and then you can go for, for the uh, recording of this uh, lab or for the slides. So here we have something uh, in the beginning about copyright information, because as I mentioned to you, this uh, file belongs to in the data. Then we have those three main libraries that are in the graph for the file. And then we start the program, and then we have a define 
lots of defines, and they are defining constants. So in this case, we're defining the name of the file. So the file, the netcdf file that we are going to create is called simplexy.nc. This file has two dimensions. So n deems is the number of dimensions, and those dimensions are called nx and ny, and x has six uh, dimensions, six values, I'm sorry, and uh, y has uh, up to 12 values. And also we have some definitions about error codes that are used uh, mainly for who will be actually programmed uh, in NetCDF. So uh, then we started the main program. And in the main program, we have the definitions of the variables and dimensions. So we have here NCID, XDIMID, YDIMID, and VARID. So every uh, entity that we have in NCDF has an ID. So NCID will be the ID for the file, for the main file. XDIMID is the ID for the dimension X. Y dim ID will be the dimension for the, the the ID for the dimension Y, and var ID will be the ID for the variable that we will create. Here in this example, we have only one variable, and then we have a vector called dim IDs, which has both IDs for both dimensions. So it's a vector of size two, and then I will construct this vector with the ID of dimension X and ID of dimension Y, and then we have uh, variable to store the data. So in this case, it's called data out, and it has the dimensions of the dimensions that I have for the file. So data out is an x uh, plus times n y, which means an x n y six times twelve. And then we have some variables for the loops and for error handling. So red val value uh, of return and then x and y that will make the loops for our dimension x and dimension y. And here we are now creating some pretend data. So because we don't have, uh, in this case, uh, reader to load, I could be loading this data in different ways with different, different data sets from different function functions in C. But here I'm just creating some pretend data uh, using just this simple formula just to uh, be able to construct my NetCDF file and to visualize it. Then I will start creating my file. So NC create is the function that creates a NetCDF file. So it just it started my file with uh, in that moment uh, the inside, but the file has a name. And then there is a mode that I open the file. So NC Clover, in that case, if the file doesn't exist, uh, it will create. If the file already exists, it will overwrite it. And then that function returns to me the NC ID, which is the ID for this NetCDF file that I'm just creating. I check if there is no else. So here we are in a perfect world. There is no errors. Uh, so I create my netcdf file. So now I have a netcdf file that, that has nothing inside. What do I need to uh, define? I need to define the dimensions. So I have a function to define dimensions. It's called ncdefdim. As I mentioned, we have in this example two dimensions, x and y. I'm calling these dimensions with their proper name as a string. So I'm calling x is x and y is y. And uh, to call this function, I have to pass the ID of the NetCDF that I'm working with, the name of the dimension, the size of the dimension, and that function will return to me the ID of that dimension that was created. So I will store that ID in that variable called xdimid, as we mentioned before. And then I will do the same for the y. And then I will define both dimensions. Once I have both dimensions defined, I have both IDs for those dimensions. So I can construct that vector that I mentioned before, dim IDs. And it's a vector uh, of size two who has um, both IDs and we will use that vector for defining the variable. Now let's define the variable. So 
for that, we have lots of parameters. So the first we know already, it's NCID, is the ID of the NetCDF file. Then it's the name of that variable. Here I'm calling data. And then it's the type of the variable. And here, because of the formula that we used before, I know that the type is int. So we have predefined types in NetCDF. One of them is NCINT. It could be double, it could be int. 64, so there are different types that we can use. Uh, and DIMs, which is the number of dimensions. DIM IDs, which is that vector that I just construct. So I have here two dimensions, and here I have the IDs of those two dimensions. And then finally, our ID will be the variable that will restore the ID of this variable that I just created. So this is a return parameter. I don't have it uh, when I start the function, but then the function give it give it back to me, uh, and then I have the ID of this specific variable that I'm calling data. So for NetCDF, uh, the classic uh, format, we need we have two types of modes. So we have define mode and then we have data mode. In define mode, we use define mode to define the metadata. So it's not, you can see here that we didn't uh, insert the data yet in the file. We just uh, tell the NetCDF file how many data, or the size of the data, the, the number of dimensions, the name of the variable that we have this data. So this is the metadata. So uh, in NetCDF, in the classic uh, model, we have these different modes, but this does, uh, we don't have that in NetCDF 4. So if you're using uh, the newest uh, model for NetCDF, we don't need that line at all. Uh, and now, OK, I told by NetCDF here in, the, in this example, the classic mode, uh, I'm leaving the uh, Define mode, I'm going to data mode now. So in data mode, let's insert the data in the variable, in the variable data. <laughs> so to insert the data, we have NC put var blah, blah, blah. So here, because I know the data is int, I will call NC put var int. But if my data was a different type of data, I had another NC put var function to uh, insert the specific type of data that I'm uh, that I want to, to insert. And this function we get we provide for this function the NC ID, the ID of the NetCDF file, the ID of the variable that I want to insert the data, and then the data. And the data here, because it's a vector, I'm passing a pointer for the whole vector. So that function is able to load the data uh, all at once. And once I finished inserting the data, I can then close my NetCDF file and hopefully everything will be okay. And then I will have in my directory after running the C uh, code, this simple li.nc file. And see close to close an NetCDF file, I only need the ID of that NetCDF file, and then the file is closed. So now that we finished this part, let's return to the presentation. So as I mentioned before, here in the presentation, I explained step by step of the code as I with the file. And then hopefully in the end, we will get success and then we have the NetCDF file. But to do that, I need to compile that C file. Remember, it's a C file. It's simple X, Y, W, R, C. So to compile a C file, usually you, we use GCC or maybe CC. Uh, if, of course, you are in a Linux uh, environment. and But in this case, I need also to link the libraries and some specific flags for the net uh, CDF. So we use uh, a tool called ncfig, ncconfig. So ncconfig, I only have to call my program the way I would call in a normal C code. And then I have to add 
this part for NC config to work. And NC config has lots of uh, options, so you can see all those options if you try NC config minus minus all. Here in our case for this program, we only need uh, to to use the options for the libs and the cflex. So once I have that line, now I can compile my program and then I have the output of my program, which is the executable that I will run to hopefully create my netcdf file. Oops. So let's do that. So to compile, we'll be just copy that, uh, for that uh, previous line now putting here the name of the program and then the name of the output as you choose here i just put the same name of the program and then i run my file and hopefully i will have everything will go uh according to what we're expecting and then we have the simple xy.nc file which is our um netcdf file in the directory so let's go back to the directory and play with that. So remember, we are here in the repository, and then we have the C files. So let's go back a little bit and create in the main repository. Could be any anywhere. Repository called example, and then I will copy that file, that C file. This called simple xywr.c. I will copy this file to this new uh, directory example. And I will just take the opportunity and copy another file that's R. And I think you can see where I'm going with it because it's WR is for write, RD is for read but we'll play with RD a little bit later. So I have here now, so I'll go to this example. So I have here now in this example, those two C files, and we are playing now first with the WR file. So I just need to compile this file. So I only need to copy this line here. When you copy, because it's a PDF, be careful if you have actually the, the dashes in the right place. So here I know that everything is working. And then I compile my file. I created here the executable file. And what I will do, I will execute this file. Success. Yay. I hope there is a netcdf file there. Yay. You can see here that you have simple xy.nc. So hopefully that file has everything that we are uh, inserting with the C code. So the dimensions, the data, the variables. How do I know that? So if I try to just check on this file, I .nc, it's a binary file. So that's the reason we need those utilities to understand a little bit of what's happening inside of this file. So coming back to the presentation, we checked, we compile, we run the simple xywr. We have now the simple xy.nc, which is our netcdf file in our directory. So what? So. I want to read that file. So I should try first to use the function to read the file, but what that function does. So that function is really quite similar to the uh, that program, in fact. It's really quite similar to the program to write the file. I have the same dependencies. I have here the links for the, fun for the, the, the file. And then the same way I went through the code for the write, here we have uh, about the read, and here I will go to, uh, let, let's open it again. It's not a big deal. So we can open now, we have it already here, the read. So to open the read, what do we have? What is different? That's the main question. So we still have the copyright, you still have the libraries, the name, the name 
notifications, the error codes, everything looks similar. And then we have different now uh, definitions for the variables that we use. We don't have the DIM IDs, but uh, we all need that uh, for now. What we will do, we need to open an etcdf file. So NC open works exactly like NC create. I give the file name, I give the mode that I want to, in that case, open. So there, there are different modes for open and to create a file. And then I will receive back the ID of that netcdf file. Once I have that ID, I open my file and with, with that ID, I will load the variable, the variables in that case, in this case, just one, the variable that I have that contains my data. So remember, I just collect, I just got the ID from the netcdf file. This data here was the name that I gave to the variable that is storing the file, is storing the data. So we need to have some information. If I had already the ID of the variable, I don't need the data, but if I don't have the ID, I need the name of the variable to be able to retrieve uh, the ID. Once I have the ID of both netcdf file and the variable, I'm able to load the data. So those two functions, so this first function is uh, inquire var ID. So I just give the name of the ID and receive back the ID of variable. And then here I have, we had prior put var int. So now we get get var int, which will retrieve the data and then we'll save the data in this variable that was created here, data in. And then just to compare, I can just run data in and data with the formula that I use it to, that I used to construct the data out that was there in the right uh, file. I just check that the, there is the same data, and then again I close my netted file. So this is the right. Let's go there and let's play with the right. So again we just compile, but now it's rd. Hope now we can. So we can see here that we have this file. So hopefully now we can read the data. Uh, that's a little bit frustrating. Yes, it gave me success reading example. File so xy.nc. Where are the numbers? Why does that help me to have that program if I cannot see the numbers? So this is the next step, and that's the reason we need utilities. Of course, you can always go into the C code and check for the numbers, but hopefully we have better ways to do that. So going back to the presentation, so let us let me close this to clear. So here again, the explanation about the RD, and then I compile the RD again, and I run, and then I was able to write and read an etcdf file without actually seeing the content. So now let's see how can we see the content. So to see the content, we use a tool called ncdump, and then I will present to you those uh, two tools at the same time, ncdump and ncgen, because they are kind of inverse one of another. So an etcdf data, remember that we try to read the .nc file, but it it was a binary file, so I could not read. But then we have a tool, which is ncdump, to convert that data to CDL text. And if you remember from the other presentations, CDL text is a text that I can see what's going on inside the data. I can see uh, some structure for the metadata and also for the data. And then if I want instance, to change something, to change a value, to change a variable in the CDL text is re really easier to do that than in the C code. So I can edit the CDL text and then go back with the netcdf file using now ncgen. So those tools, they are complementary, and those are the tools that uh, we can use to edit files uh, in a same way if, of course, the files are not too big. So the idea to edit is just, I have my netcdf, I use my netcdf file, I use ncdump, generate a text file, use any text or editor that uh, I want, I edit the CDL file, 
So now I use, again, the NCGen to generate a new NetCTF file. So that's the idea. And again, just uh, keep in mind that we can do that uh, when we have uh, small data. And uh, to edit the metadata usually is always uh, useful because the metadata usually is not uh, too big, even for files with big data. We will see that a little bit later. And we can, there is uh, something else on, about the NCGEM because what about if I want to edit the CDL file, but then I want to generate another C code? Yeah, you can do that as well. Now you just use NCGEM minus L and then letter for the language. So in our case, C, I just need to use from the CDL file NCGEM minus L C and then I put the name of the program in C and then I have a program in C that will generate that NetCDF file that was ori the original file for that CDL file. So we have now a complete loop. You go and then you can, you can come back. And then of course, you can also do the same thing because sometimes think that you want to add, for instance, um, the numbers from one to a thousand in the file. If you want to do that in the text file, you have to type all of them. But then if you call a program and you see, you just put a four and then you have all the numbers. So there are things that are easier to edit uh, if you are editing inside the, the code. And then again, compile, run, because it's a C code, and then you have your NetCDF file. So now let's play a little bit with uh, those tools. So the first idea is let's inspect what's inside the simple XY file. That's what that's what we wanted. So let's go back to the terminal. And then I can just say nc dump simple x y dot nc. So you can see here that it's exactly what we defined in the C uh, code. I have two dimensions, values 6 and 12. I have a data which is called the, that's the name of the variable. And then I have the data in, G, in this case, sorry, in this case, 72 numbers because I have two dimensions, 6 times uh, 12, 72 numbers. So now I can actually see my file. So it's a simple file. And now if I want, I edit this file and do uh, all the play that I showed you with NCGEM and NC, uh, uh, gem to create the language and to create the NetCDF file. So let's play a little bit with it. So uh, assume that I have, so this was the output for the, so I'll redirect that output for a file. Let's, for instance, call this file simple.cdl because it's a CDL file. So let's see what you have in simple.cdl file. Exactly the output. So assume that I want to edit this file now. What do I want to do? Let's assume that I want to remove some data. For instance, that I want to remove four lines of data. So before I remove the, those four lines of data, pay attention that the end of those lines is with a semicolon. So if I want to remove those four lines, I have to remove, but then I have to leave the semicolon to end uh, the data. But now data is not uh, coherent because I don't have any more 72 points. I have now 24. So I can reduce here, which was exactly what I did. I had six lines, now I just have two lines. But then I can play a little bit with things like that. Uh, six. So I have 24 numbers, 0 to 23, but they are not four lines with six columns. It doesn't matter. When I create my NetCDF file, my NetCDF file knows exactly the order of the numbers. Let's this simple CDL file, close here. So now I have an edit, a file that it was edit. 
And uh, oh, just one thing that I forgot to mention. So if you want in a file to play with when you are playing with NCDump before without generating a, an output. So we have the metadata and then you have the data. And sometimes the data is too big and then you just want to inspect the metadata. So you have an option minus H and then you have just the metadata and then you don't have the data. So we have just the information about the data. That's really useful. We have a lot of other options for the NC dump, but this one is by far the most useful, at least for me. We have here the CDL format. And then if I want to play, what do I do? I can NC dump and create a CDL file. And this CDL file, now I can create again a NetCDL file. So let's go back to the terminal and CGN. And here there is a parameter that I have to send. So it's minus B and CGN minus B simple dot CDL. So let's see what happened. It created for me here a file simple.nc. Let's inspect that file. How do I inspect the file? And dump simple.nc. Look how amazing that is. Not only I have now in my edit file, but uh, it was rescaled. So now I have four times six. I didn't have to have that. But the tool uh, already gives me that uh, for free because I change here in the dimensions. And of course, I kept consistent. So I still have 24 numbers. And so here we have from a CDL file, if I use minus B, I create a net CDF file. And if I use, again, from the CDL, minus L and the language, I will create a code for that file. So that code, you can have it like that. Here, there is a tricky. If you don't redirect, you have it on your screen. So I'm just redirecting uh, automatically, or maybe not. So I will use the same uh, CDL file. So NC, yeah. but now minus LC simple dot cdl and then you see that i have the c code but the c code is on the screen i don't want the c code on the screen so what do i do i redirect and i call simple dot c so now i have i want to open that file use it again and then i have my file simple dot c and the interesting thing about this file it's virtually the same that we had before but there are things that are a little bit different so they the 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 numbers are defined because we had defined in the in the original file and here we don't have any formula like we had in the original file we have the actual numbers because this uh, c code was generated uh using the actual uh net DF file which has the numbers so uh, this idea might not be a good idea if you have, again, a lot of data, because then you have a huge uh, C file here, because we will have to list all the data that you have. So we played, and then we can keep playing, because once I generate, I can compare, and then I can generate again, and then I can change, and then I can generate again. So that's the idea of those tools, and they are quite practical. So, uh, so I can always, as I mentioned here, start over again. So now let's uh, play with uh, the last utility that I will present to you that is called NC View. So this utility, it doesn't belong uh, to the main package of uh, NetCDF. The other two, once you install it, you have, you have it you have them already but this one is quite simple to install you also have the installation uh, process uh, in the end of this presentation and so let's check uh, what happened when i call nc view with that simple file that we just create so that simple file the original one with all the lines we have this last here and then we have a scale of colors and then 
if I open them, NCV simple xy dot nc. So that's that's what happened. So I have that same picture that I have in the slide. Let me see if I can go back to this slide. Yes. So I have the same picture that I had in the slide, and here I have my tool. So my tool have a scale, and then you can see that there are numbers that they are not exactly the same number, but they are represented by the same color, and that's the reason we have this. Uh, lines here kind of for instance from 30 to 40 it doesn't matter if it's 31 35 or 38 you all have uh, a green color and then here you can play with the tool and you have a lot of things to to play with and that i will leave that uh, to you to play uh, after the lab and ask me some questions if you want on Friday. But this file is not too nice to visualize. And because of that, I have other files in the directory. So I'm leaving out the, I, the example. And then I have in the lab files, remember that I had CDL files, all the CDLs, all the files that I'm presenting to you and the ones I'm uh, presenting to, to play later, the C files, and then the NC files. So I will just open the NC files. And then I have here more examples of NC files to play with. And then two particular examples, I put it here separately in two uh, different um, directories. Uh, one is veg. So let's see what we have in veg. So let's see. So let's play a little bit and sit down. Veg type 0.5. Oh, a lot of data. I cannot see anything. I don't understand what's going on. So maybe at least if I, if I put minus h, I can see a little data. So I see I have a lot of uh, attributes that we saw in the talk, but we didn't cover in this lab. And then we can see that we have 720 times 360 numbers. And that's the reason we had that lots of numbers. So if I want now to visualize that file, because that file is nice to visualize, we have Yay, the globe. So this is, uh, you have the reference for this file in the, in the presentation. So this is about vegetation in the whole globe. And then they define here uh, a scale for what they are uh, classifying for the different types of uh, vegetation. So I'm not working with that here. I'm just showing to you that these two that other file was really uh, bland, I would say. You can see really nice things. And here is just a snapshot of the world and the vegetation. And then we have something. The other file that is called snow. So we have, let's see now. Let's, let's play a little bit with NC dump first. Uh, one of them. And I know already that I, I will have a lot of numbers, so I will just put minus H. And yeah, I had 360 times uh, 90. Not too much, but a lot. And if I check the other file, uh, I think the other file is bigger. Oh. Did I open the same? Well, but let's open this file now with NC view and see what happened. Cover. Again, we have the globe. One of the tools that you can play with is this one to increase, but you can see that uh, as long as you increase, you lose resolution. But then here, this file, you have a time series. So we don't, you only, you don't have data only for a specific time. You have data for multiple times. So here we have, in this case, January. And then if I go with the arrow, I have February, March, May, April, April, May, June, July, and all the months. 
So in this case, just for a year. And then I can see how there is no pattern is changing according to the month. So uh, this is a little bit more interesting to see. But again, if you go there and expect the file, we have all the data there. We can expect it with uh, NC uh, dump to have an idea of, of what the data has. And then coming back here for the presentation, I put those uh, those pictures here. So this one is for the oh, this one is a different one. It's called elevations. It's also a nice one that you can play that it's inside the the directory as well. And then you have the vegetation, and then you have different resolutions for the vegetation. And then I uh, put shots here of all those months for a specific year, I think 1971, if I'm not wrong. So you can see the different patterns over the month. So uh, that's for the NC uh, NetCDF utilities that I wanted to present to you. We have lots of other utilities, so I'm putting here some links that you can play with. And as I promised before, we have here the files for practicing. So we have different files. Those four first files are from the unit data. And then we have those files about vegetation and snow coverage. And my idea, I put it here also a summary of actions. So the idea is inspect the file, compile the C file, play with the NC, use NC dump, create the CDL, change the CDL, generate another NET file, generate another C code, change the C code, generate another NET CDL file. So for you to have this ability for when you come uh, into a, a when you, when you have a NetCDF file that you need to change something, you know now already how to do it in a very easy way. Uh, so just showing, this is the appendix about uh, appendix about uh, building NetCDF from scratch. You can have you can check it or not. So uh, thank you for your time. I know that I use a little bit more of my time for this presentation, but I hope it uh, was delivered in a clear way. Thank you.